Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all doing fantastic. And that you're all having a great day. And without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So, you should all already know what time it is. Um, we are at a quite peculiar time in history right now. Uh, the Bitcoin halving is supposed to be right around the corner. I know, I, I know, I can't believe it myself. I've been waiting for this for for centuries, it feels, at this point, and we are finally uh, moving up to the actual date. Uh, so, of course, a lot of the news out right now is surrounding this idea as to what is going to happen to the Bitcoin market as we get closer to the halving. Investor sentiment towards Bitcoin is shifting from anticipation to optimism as the halving approaches. This was revealed on the latest on-chain insights noon letter from an on-chain data platform known as Into the Block. The reason is that there's close attention being paid by investors to the halving's potential impact on Bitcoin scarcity and subsequent price movements. Historically, Bitcoin has always done extremely well after the halving, as have other coins as well. It says, historically, Bitcoin's value has surged post-halving. Due to the combined effects of increased demand and reduced supply growth and investors are willing to see if the story, okay, if the story will repeat this time as well. After the first halving, the Bitcoin's price skyrocketed from $13 to $652, marking a staggering 4,802% return on investment. A lot of the news right now is focusing quite heavily. You even saw a day or two ago. A lot of the news is focusing on the uh, people who are mining Bitcoin. They're Plugging in more machines, they're going full force as much as they can because their revenue, essentially, is going to be getting cut in half in the next few days. So they're trying to make as much as they possibly can in anticipation for the having. I think it's going to be a very wild time. We've been, ta we've been talking about this for, I mean, we've been, since last year, we've been discussing this particular Bitcoin having, not even considering the other two that are to actually follow in the future. But yeah, um, we'll see what ends up happening. I'm expecting once again, I need to keep repeating it so everyone also has it in their minds. I'm expecting, I'm expecting a slight dip in price because people always try to sell the news, not understanding that the news is far more significant that they could possibly actually imagine. And I think the most important part is the first three months afterwards. Uh, we've seen the charts before. Bitcoin has normally done anywhere from a 30 to an 80% rise in price the first three months after, not even considering the next six or the next nine months. So let's see if we can get to that $100,000 Bitcoin. There's a lot of optimism, a lot of optimism surrounding the Hong Kong Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, the other ETFs that are launching in Germany, the other ones in other countries around the world that we've also been talking about as well. Everyone has seemingly, <laughs> what timing has, has found a way to launch all of these things right before the Bitcoin having. It's gonna be an interesting week and it is going to be an interesting year. I know it's only April, but it's 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 going to get wild. That's the um, investor sentiment, I guess. A lot of people are talking about it. And yeah. Let's move on. So this is also... And, I, and I'll say it this way. I don't know why a lot of people within the cryptocurrency space kind of make sure that they use this news as a way to... I, I don't know. 
if, if it's being used to scare people. I don't know if it's being used for like actual meaning or like people are trying to just put this news out there. But the news usually, excuse my French, usually ends up being BS more often than not. You'll see the news, we'll go over it, I'll tell you about it, and I tell you, I will tell you why it's wrong, and it's basically just a, a bunch of fear-mongering. Uh, dragging it on back, for some reason, the cryptocurrency space seems to be quite fascinated uh, with news that has nearly nothing to do uh, with the cryptocurrency space. Um, and I mean, whoever wrote this article, you deserve a medal for nonsense. It says, amid the ceaseless dance of market metrics, the U.S. economy's future appears hazier than a foggy morning in San Francisco. You think I'm joking? This is literally what they wrote. With a concoction of optimism and dread bubbling in the financial cauldron, it's Jamie Dimon, who is the head of J.P. Morgan Chase, the bank that scams the world. Jamie Dimon is sounding the alarm once again. Suggesting that we might be headed towards a scenario reminiscent of economic tales best left in history books. AI must have written this. There's no human being on the planet who would even think of pushing those words together. Jamie Dimon is back in the news. Back in the news once again. Jamie Dimon, for those of you who don't know, is very famous for getting on stage and talking down to the Fed, the people who print the money. And talking down to regulators as if they're not regulators and as if the people who print money are going to listen to him. And he constantly stands on stage to tell people that something is wrong. There's a problem. Only I know that there's a problem and no one else and only I can save you. As I've said in other videos long, long ago, I, I, I think that would have also shook me as well. Um, as I got into the crypto space and also into financial markets around like 2010, I told you before, I was in um, financial markets. I loved the idea of mutual funds and ETFs and dividends and all those other things. And then I found crypto and kind of never looked back. A lot of these gurus of the money uh, constantly pop into the news to tell people that something's wrong. And the issue is, is that people believe it. Uh, we are trained, especially as I am from the States, we are trained to believe that people who have more money than us, especially when it comes to billionaires, in some way know things that we don't know. So when we continuously hear from these people that something is wrong, you assume that something's wrong. In reality, it's, it's part of a larger game that the rich play to keep the poor out of financial markets. We've seen it before also within the cryptocurrency space over literally the last decade. They'll go on TV. They'll say that Bitcoin's terrible. Bitcoin's horrible. Bitcoin's awful. And then we end up receiving news either from the billionaires and millionaires like directly. We will hear in the news how amazing Bitcoin is and or someone will find information that this company or a company um, has been allocating millions of dollars into a fund for a company that actually is holding Bitcoin or is mining Bitcoin. We've also heard a lot of times before that these companies, or a company, if you will, who spoke negatively about Bitcoin, has been funding Bitcoin mining operations. And it's like, so you were just lying the exact same time. Jamie Dimon is in the news again because there's a bit of optimism around interest rate um, falling, going down, drops, cuts. That's the word, interest rate cuts. Because we heard earlier this year that a number of financial institutions believed that we were going to see four interest rate cuts. Then that number dropped down to three. And now it's between two and three as well because the people from the Fed have said that inflation is... And I don't care for the term. They keep saying like stickier than, and I, and I don't, I, I don't care for it at all. Uh, stickier than they, than they like, and therefore uh, interest rates have to remain elevated at least for the time being. So Jamie Dimon is saying that if if they don't lower interest rates soon, interest rates could soar to eight percent. And if they go that high, well, then the entire economy is going to completely collapse, and no one's going to. 
The problem is, is that they're not going to raise interest rates to 8%. If we raise interest rates to 8%, inflation would have to be steady. Steady above 10 to 15% for a good year within the United States. This is another effort in fear-mongering by Jamie Dimon. And I always say the internet is a very fascinating place. Because I think these people say things and they forget that they've said things and then they say other things, forgetting that people can go find the other things that they said before. Don't believe me? Here's an article from 2023 in September. Jamie Dimon says it's a huge mistake to think the economy will boom with so many risks out there. He began to tell people to sell off, get out of the market. It's really scary. I don't know what's happening right now. We can't we can't last this way forever. It's it's gonna continue getting scarier. October eleventh, twenty twenty two. This is serious, says Jamie Dimon, as he warns the US is likely to dip into a recession in six to nine months. Well that's well that's weird. That's a weird time frame. October twenty twenty two, yes, in six to nine months in the past, the US is going to dip into a recession. Jamie Dimon also being one of those people who kept on saying the word depression. You might remember if you were here for those videos, it was kind of all in the news every single day. The idea of inflation and the idea of interest rate hikes was setting people off. And every single day in the cryptocurrency news, there were multiple articles about the U.S. and the world going into a recession depression and how things would never, ever, 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 ever look the same again. Jamie Dimon's warning for the U.S. economy. Nobody knows what's coming next. This is the 18th of July in 2020. Uh-huh. Dimon says or sees recent volatility as harbinger of things to come. This is the 4th of April, 2019. Jamie Dimon was warning that markets don't look right. Something's wrong. Things are going to fall. I can't believe it. Something's terrible. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be as scary as the other times when I said it before. The market is dealing with something it's never seen before, and that has Jamie Jamie Dimon worried. Uh, 31st of July, 2018. Mm -hmm. This is from the 8th of August, 2017. Dimon sides with bears, says sovereign bonds are too pricey. So in 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 23, and 3, and 2024, Jamie Dimon says that something's wrong. What? This has been consistently something wrong with the economy. There are a bunch of other people who do the exact same thing. Another one is um, Robert Kiyosaki, who's also been far too heavy in, in in the cryptocurrency news as of late. I don't I didn't bring you the latest news story, but it's like, okay. For those of you who don't know, um Robert Kiyosaki is famous for the uh book that is complete fiction called Rich Dad Poor Dad. Uh for those of you who weren't here before, we went over that in an another video because he began to creep into the cryptocurrency space, and then I was like, okay, let me tell everyone. Uh, people have looked into that book before, and none of it is actually true as far as we can tell. All the places that he said where these hotels were actually aren't there. And other places where there were hotels that he specifically named and were said that were owned by a rich dad, if you will, were actually owned by like nine different people across multiple hotels, and none of them had the same matching name. So... He's been in the news recently, basically just mimicking a bunch of other people. Uh, when people make it into the news by saying that the economy is going to dip, he's in the news saying the economy is going to collapse. When people are in the news saying that Bitcoin's about to go up, he's in the news saying that Bitcoin's about to surge. Kathy Wood recently just said that Bitcoin, she believes, Kathy Wood believes by the year, I believe, 2030? I think it's 2030. That she thinks Bitcoin's price is going to be like $2.5 million. And can you guess who said the exact same thing? Yeah, Mr. Robert Kiyosaki, because he's just mimicking other people at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's not, not smart to not be afraid of the potential economic collapse, but that's not how collapses work. It's not going to be like one gigantic massive cascade down to zero over the course of a 14-minute period. That's not how any of this ever works. But uh, when this news does get released, the problem is that a lot of other people in crypto, as this is on a cryptocurrency news website, 
end up getting afraid and they sell their coins and they sell their positions and these other things thinking that Jamie Dimon is correct and has been correct before. The problem is he hasn't been correct at all. You might remember that other video. I had two videos actually. Uh, one here on mo one on money rules at different points in time where we heard from the guy from the big short, the guy who predicted the, the short. Uh, he's, been in the, he's been in the news since 2009. Nine, 2009. Every single other month, quarterly, year, basically saying the economy is going to collapse, everything is going to zero. And I... <laughs> I don't know why why rich people do this. He he finally stopped when last year he had a wager with someone uh, that the world's economy was, I mean, literally going to collapse completely. And he said that this would happen by the end of last year and wagered over a billion dollars. And can you can you guess who lost? He did. So I don't know why people like to scare other people. Maybe it's just simply in their nature because they have nothing else better to do. I can't imagine having Jamie Dimon money and making sure that I scare people. Like, you will never be poor. What's the point of trying to scare other people out of the markets? That's the Jamie Dimon says, Whoa, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. The economy is about to collapse tomorrow. And yeah. Let's move on. Also in news, but not really news, Ethereum developers are working on rolling out the next gigantic upgrade for Ethereum, dubbed Electra. That's apparently coming in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the problem is, and I say this nicely, is no one really cares. Yeah, uh, because the, 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 the main problem with ethereum is its speed while we've seen during a recent upgrade that the speed has become speedier anytime that there is an actual upgrade to the network it tends to be something behind the scenes that most people don't really care for so the test net is going to be launching at the end of April for it. That means May or June is when we'll have the actual upgrade. And then this will also be in the news. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm reading through some of it and it's not anything. It's not that it's not significant. These things are used to keep the network stronger and more secure and better than it was before. But as long as we don't have the upgrades that we were supposed to have had by 2016 for a million transactions per second and anything else like that. As long as people can stake their coins and that's reliable and get money from it and we see that Ethereum remains deflationary, I don't think any other upgrade really matters until we like hear, hey, next week we're getting 15,000 transactions per second on Ether. So yeah, there's a bunch of other upgrades coming in this as well. And they're all core developers consensus known as ACDC. I thought that was quite clever. Yeah, that's the Ethereum Electra upgrade is going to be test netted in the next couple of weeks. And probably we'll see the full rollout sometime in June and or I say June. June sounds the most believable. Yeah, that's the Bagabaga news. Yeah, let's move on. Also in, whoa, okay. Tether has recently announced a $100,000 grant to the BTC Pay Server Foundation, solidifying their support of the free and open source software movement. The BTC Pay Server Foundation is renowned for its open source payment processor software, Utilized and tailored by numerous merchants and businesses globally to facilitate Bitcoin and USDT transactions. According to Tether's CEO, Paolo Ardoino, the grant reflects the company's unwavering commitment to fostering growth of open source technology. He said our grant to the BTC Pay Server Foundation is a testament of Tether's commitment to the open source community and our belief in the transformative power of technology. Um, cool. Nothing massively substantial here. Uh, this is basically 
a number of years ago was actually really weird. Um, very few cryptocurrency projects actually had any funding. I know that sounds bizarre, but a lot of people were simply into crypto and or creating for the actual coins and, you know, doing all these things, but they were given no money. There were a lot of people in the early days who were actually developing out of the kindness of their heart <laughs> to keep these networks together. And then eventually people began to sound the alarm, I think around, I think, it was 2015, 2016 when the people from Ethereum came forward and they were like, yeah, we're actually running out of money. And then a lot of people basically began to like donate in a certain way and also kind of give grants to these companies. You know, if you're doing something that's open source and for people and here to help the networks, now they have people donating. So we used to get a lot of news like this before in 2018, 2019. There was a lot of times, I mean, it was mainly Ripple doing it. I, I think they were trying to get more into the news uh, where Ripple was donating like half a million dollars and $147,000 to people who were either uh, free open source within the space and or who were committed to uh, you know, announcing that they were going to build something directly onto the XRP ledger. But I guess this is all in the same spirit of that. So cool. Tether is giving 100000 to a uh, Bitcoin server foundation. Fantastic. Cool. Please keep it going. These companies have an egregious amount of money. They're using these networks and they want the safety and all these other things. But you got to also make sure that you pay the people so that they actually <laughs> make sure that these things remain um, safe. That's the Tether news. Also in... I think we're supposed to care about this. I'm not really sure why, but a number of Latin American countries recently have been popping into the news um, about like legalization of crypto within their borders and stuff like that. And I, okay, uh, Costa Rica has reignited, they say. Discussions regarding the legalization of Bitcoin and other assets for daily transactions. And they don't really clarify if that means that Costa Rica might be making it uh, legal tender. If it'll simply be the same way that it is in Europe and the um, in North America, where you can just kind of use it freely and trade with it. This is kind of what it sounds like. It says for daily transactions, but that could also mean like, is it legal for remittances? There's no real indication anywhere. Jan3, a Bitcoin technology company dedicated to expanding access to Bitcoin globally, revealed Costa Rica's positive move towards crypto. The company revealed that Costa Rica has resumed the debate on allowing the use of Bitcoin and other digital currencies for daily transactions. In a post on Twitter, they wrote... Recently, the nation has resumed debates around a potential crypto asset law that could compromise the ability to freely use Bitcoin as money for day-to-day -day transactions. And then they're talking to another congresswoman there as well. So are they looking to ban it? Are they just now legalizing crypto? Do they not want people to use it for trading? There's no... See what I mean? News like this ends up popping up and I'm and I'm always confused as to not if we should care, but it's like a... You've given me no reason to understand exactly what's taking place. What's happening in Costa Rica? Why are we supposed to, you know, put this into the news to really, you know, see, oh my gosh, like, oh, Costa Rica, like, like that, like, you know, give me like a little bit more so I really understand exactly what's going on. Um, I don't assume they're going to ban it. That would be a gigantic mistake. But we've also seen other countries already who've been banning Bitcoin and not working out too well for them, and we'll see exactly how that goes for them in the year 2030. So, cool? I, I don't really know. The news the last couple of days has been kind of weird. We've, we've, we've seen it together. The news has been kind of like a random assortment of things that are currently taking place within the cryptocurrency space. I'm not excessively sure, but I would assume a portion of it has to do with people kind of holding their breath. I think everyone's waiting for the having. Everyone's waiting for this moment. It's been the topic of discussion since last year, and especially since we got the actual Bitcoin ETFs. What's been the news? Where will Bitcoin's price go now that we have the ETFs after the having? It's been in the news every single day. So I, I think that's kind of the the main topic of discussion right now that is being discussed, but I think also everyone's literally just holding their breath right now. 
Yeah, bit of a weird video. I know. I mean, most. I mean, let, let's be honest. Most videos here are um, they're not exactly normal. So you should be used to it by now. I mean, you know, if we're honest, uh, I do think that's gonna do it for this video. Um, I do hope that you have all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.